Welcome to EEMS 270. In this video, we will explain the graphical user interface features of the water quality module in EFTC Explorer 10.3. Let's get started. To begin working with the water quality module, you can start by opening a hydrodynamic model in EFTC Explorer. Right-click the Modules tab, then activate the Temperature module, and the Water Quality module is available to use. The Water Quality module is only available once the Temperature module has been activated. To set up the Water Quality module, right-click on Water Quality to open the Settings dialog. In this form, the user can configure the Water Quality module with six tabs, Kinetics, Nutrients, Biota, Initial Conditions, Boundary Conditions, and Sediment Fluxes. In the next section, we will start by looking at the Kinetics tab. In the Kinetics tab, the user can select the appropriate water quality kinetic module from Global Kinetic Options. In EMS 10.3, the user should only use the standard Full Kinetic Module 1, which is an extension of the water quality ICM, including kinetics of zooplankton. Other modules have been designed to allow the user to build their own water quality module and access it from EEMS. Once the kinetic module has been chosen, the user needs to select which water quality constituents will be simulated. Clicking on the params button will bring up the list of constituents available for the simulation. The user can type 1 or 0 to activate or deactivate a constituent. It should be noted that algae or zooplankton species will be updated automatically depending on how many groups of these organisms need to be simulated in the model. For water quality models, EEMS automatically initializes the model's parameters with their default values. However, when a warm start is needed, it is convenient to initialize the model's parameters using data from previous runs. This process is done by using the Initialize Water Quality Parameters from File button in the miscellaneous frame. This operation should only be conducted once at the start of the water quality model construction, since it will overwrite all of the current model settings. EEMS also allows users to assign different water quality parameters for different zones of the model domain. To use this option, the user must first check the Use Zones of Kinetics box and then click on the Modify button to bring up the Major Settings tab for Water Quality Zone Kinetic Parameters. From this tab, the user can enter the number of kinetic zones, as well as the parameters for the Water Quality Model. These parameters include the reaeration process, background light extinction coefficient, and settling velocity for organic matter. To define zones, click on the Define Zones button and bring up the Apply Cell Properties via Polygon tab. Zones can be assigned according to both layers and cells. Therefore, at a cell coordinate, there may be more than one zone assigned to it if the model grid has several layers. The Fecal Coliform Decay button allows the users to set the decay rate and temperature effect constants for fecal coliform. Also, parameters to compute the light extinction can be set by clicking on the Light Extinction button. The next step is to set up the parameters for nutrient constituents in the model. The parameters have been grouped for each constituent, including carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, and COD and DL. To give an example, the user would click on the Nitrogen button to open the Nitrogen Parameters tab and enter the value for each parameter. These parameters characterize the major processes affecting nitrogen concentration and cycling, such as hydrolysis and mineralization. Most water quality processes are temperature dependent. By going to the Temperature Effects tab, the user can modify the parameters which control the effects of temperature on hydrolysis and mineralization processes in the nutrient constituents. Sorption and subsequent settling is one pathway for removal of nutrients from the water column. Both phosphate and dissolved silica sorb to inorganic solids, which is represented in the model as total active metals. In EFTC Explorer, the user may also specify the sorption options, which is set to none by default. 
whether using total active metal based or cohesive sediment based options, the parameters can be modified in either case by clicking on the Modify Parameters button. From EEMS 10.3, the user is able to simulate an unlimited number of algal and microphyte groups in the model. To modify parameters for algae and macrophyte, click on the Modify button and enter the number of groups simulated. Fill in the parameters for each group following its kinetic processes, which include growth, basal metabolism, and predation. EEMS 10.3 also provides advanced submodules that account for the effects of zooplankton and shellfish farming in the water column. Additionally, the rooted plant and epiphyte submodule allows the user to reproduce the contributions of submerged aquatic vegetation to the total primary production and nutrient cycling in many water bodies. More details about these submodules will be discussed in the next videos. Photosynthesis is essential in producing the food base of an aquatic system and is an important source of oxygen. In photosynthesis, plants capture solar energy and store it as chemical energy or organic compounds. EMS provides several options to compute the solar radiation for photosynthesis. The user can select the source of radiation by the drop-down menu and then click on the Modify button to set the various related parameters. Each simulated constituent in a water quality model starts with an initial concentration for the entire model domain. EEMS provides several options to set up the initial conditions of these constituents, including spatially constant and spatially varying options for both cold and warm starts. If the spatially constant option is selected, the user can modify directly the initial value of the water quality constituent from the tab. For a spatially varying condition, a file containing the data for cells in the model needs to be imported. A cold start will involve the icfn.imp format, while a warm start will use the wqwcrst.imp file, which is generated by EEMS from the previous run data. Similar to the initial conditions, each simulated water quality constituent must have a daily concentration value for all inflow tributaries as the boundary condition. In EFTC Explorer, the water quality point source loading provides a drop-down table with three options. For the option Use Constant Point Source Loads, each constituent has a constant value of concentration. For the option Use Time Variable Point Source Mass Loading, each constituent has a time series of data that are all contained in the wqpslc.imp file. Likewise, the third option, Use Time Variable Point Source Concentrations, requires time series data for water quality constituents. However, the data of each constituent is contained in a separate file, cwqsrxx.imp. Once the boundary condition option is selected, the user can edit the time series data by clicking on the Edit button in the Time Series Data form. Some legacy water quality models use the wqpslc.imp format to contain the time series data of water quality constituents. When the Use Time Variable Point Source Concentration Boundary Condition option is selected, EEMS overwrites or appends the data from the wqpslc.imp file and converts it to the concentration time series format. Nutrients released from the sediment bed and SOD can contribute significantly to eutrophication problems. Therefore, a critical aspect of water quality modeling is to describe sediment diagenesis processes in the sediment bed and to estimate sediment fluxes released from the bed. The EFDC Plus water quality module provides different options for defining the sediment water interface fluxes for nutrients and dissolved oxygen. The user can click on the Modify Parameters button to go to Sediment Diagenesis Options and Parameters tab. The options available are 1. Externally Force Spatially and Temporally Constant Fluxes 2. Externally Force Spatially and Temporally Variable Fluxes and 3. 
internally coupled fluxes simulated with the sediment diagenesis model. The first two options require that the sediment fluxes be assigned as spatial and temporal forcing functions based on either observed or site-specific data from field surveys or best estimates based on the literature and sediment bed characteristics. The value of these sediment fluxes can be edited directly from the tab. The third option, activation of the full sediment diagenesis model, provides the cause-effect predictive capability to evaluate how water quality conditions might change with implementation of alternative load reduction or management scenarios. More detail about this option will be discussed in the next video. Thank you for watching. You can find the link to the next video below.